I have a quick and easy Addy Mug Cozy that we're going to do today on the Addy 22. So we're going to go ahead and get started um, by threading quite a bit of a tail into the inside of the machine and then going ahead and casting on that first row. Once we get that first row cast on, we are going to go ahead and reset our row counter to zero and then th get that threaded into the needle guide and we're going to do 40 rows. My first couple, I will go pretty slow, especially on the 22. Um, it likes a super loose cast on, but once we get to row 40, we are going to be ready to pull it off of our machine, um, and we're going to do a um, the pull off the machine without the waste yarn. Looks like I went a pin too far here, so I'm going to back it up just so that I stay consistent on exactly what that 40 rows looks like. And I'm going to go ahead and do a rotation with my machine. And again, I'm going to pull a pretty significant tail off so that I'll have that end to crochet as well. And I'm going to go ahead and thre thread my needle here. And then I will start pulling off from this point. If you'll notice, I kind of put my index finger in the slot next to the pin that I'm pulling off. I like to do this in case that I pull a little bit too tough or something whenever I'm going around so that I don't drop stitches and mess up my work there at the end. So once I have done this part, I'm ready to move my machine over to the side and we're going to stretch out our work, make sure that everything looks good before we go ahead and cinch up those ends. This makes a great little project to use for those little scrap balls of yarn that you have. And it's also, again, pretty quick and easy. 10 to 15 minutes, you can usually get one of these done. And they're great to take on the go as well because you can knock out the 40 um, rows on the Addy. And then I pack them up like this a lot of times and we'll take them to different things so that all that I have to do is work on the ends. So once I have got everything ready to go here. I'm going to just tie off these ends and secure them before we start crocheting. Now that I have both ends secured and knotted, I'm going to go ahead and grab my crochet hook, um, and get started on the chains. So on this first side, I'm going to go into my work and I'm going to chain six. And then once I get to that sixth one, I'm going to join it to the other side. Sorry I came off camera here a little bit. I had some trouble with this yarn splitting, the particular yarn that I was using, so I was fighting with that just a bit. Uh, then, after I've come through on the other side and joined it, I'm going to chain two and then twist my work around, and I'm going to start going back into each one of those original chains, and I'm going to double crochet and then single crochet into each one. That gives a nice little finish to the edge of this. That you'll see here in just a second. Once I've worked my way back through all of those um, chain stitches, I will join that down and secure it really good to this other side. And I'll be ready to knot it off.
And as you can see there, it gives a nice little decorative loop for your chain to go through for your button. Now we're going to go ahead and move to the other side and we are going to chain 18 here. This is something that you may want to play around on your row counts as well, depending on how far you want your button to sit over to the side. Or if you wanted to add multiple loops, two loops in there with two buttons. Again, it's totally up to you. Play around with it, have some fun, and, and experiment with a couple things. At this point, we are ready to secure our chain back into that center part of the tube on that end. Uh, but before we secure it all of the way down, I'm going to leave a little extra loop here. And that is just so that I can test it out. I'm going to put it on my mug, make sure that I've got enough stretch there, make sure that it's going to pull through and everything's going to work out okay. I laid it down and did it first without the mug in there. And just to see the overall look for, of it. And now I'm going to actually place it onto my mug just so that I can be for sure that's exactly where I want my uh, pull chain to be and the placement for my button to go. Once I take a look at it and I'm happy with that, I'm going to go ahead and tighten that back down, make sure that it's all good and secure. And then I'll be ready to tuck in both of those ends into the inside of the tube and cut the excess string off. I will then go ahead and place it back on my mug one more time just to finalize where that button is going to go. I give it another good stretch, make sure everything looks good still, and now I am ready for that finalized button placement. I'm pretty happy with where that's sitting, so I'm ready to go ahead and secure my button down with yarn as well. I do get my buttons from an Etsy shop that does wood buttons, and they put my little logo on there. I think that it adds a nice finish, but you can certainly use any button that you like. Now I am placing it back on my mug, and I think it looks great. Keep in mind this pattern was done for a standard 12 ounce size coffee mug. It works great on any cup with that same diameter, but please don't limit yourself to only those cup sizes. If there's a great cup that you like that's larger, just play around with the row counts. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and just let me know if you have any questions.